It's currently 8 p.m. right now. Lately, right after work, and especially around evening time, I, I just get sleepy. Like, I get tired and I'm sleepy and I want to go to sleep. But unfortunately, my brain just cannot sleep with a lot of things in my mind. Therefore, I decided to make coffee. And in my previous video, I wasn't that energetic. And being energy energetic is my thing. So, let's enjoy this for a second. Okay, so ever since I have started my YouTube channel where I talk about UX UI design and those of you who do not know that is what I do and those of you who are subscribed thank you for thank you so much for subscribing we are 4,000 subscribers and growing strong mm. okay so long story short I'm gonna make it as short as possible basically um, since day one till now people have been DMing me on Instagram LinkedIn and a couple of comments in my YouTube videos which you guys, which you guys can, can go check it out here and there um, People have been asking me, fresh designers, have been asking me how do I become a successful UX UI designer like you, you as in me, and, uh, or how do I become a UX designer where I can start working 9 to 5. So taking my design, I guess, hobby or my interest into a career. This is that video. So if you guys are wondering, stay tuned and, and watch this video. All right, so there are three parts on becoming a successful UX UI designer. Number one, learn what UX UI design is. So these are for people who have taken the courses and they've graduated from it. Either you went to school or you went to a site like Udemy, Skillshare, and got a certificate out of it, but you're still struggling to become a successful designer. Okay, so right after that stage, what you need to do is start designing something. It really doesn't matter what. You can redesign Instagram, you can redesign YouTube, anything that you are that you have an interest of like a hobby of when you're applying for a job you need to show the recruiters that you can definitely design and how do you do that is by designing or building something on your own so when i was 10 years old i was extremely a fanatic of dragon ball z i loved it i was a kid right right after school and i would watch this anime I would read the mangas. I, in fact, created a Dragon Ball Z website. It was called stainsweb.net. It had 30,000 hits a day. So I became pretty successful in that website. I learned how to code, design. I was a graphic designer. I learned marketing, programming, everything. This is when PHP was, I think it was PHP 1, and there wasn't any CSS. In fact, the only CSS there was is to do hovers and like the text hovers, and that's pretty much it. Um, and it wasn't called UX UI design, it was called web design. So having said that, find something that you really love. For example, if you love skateboarding, then design an e-commerce site of skateboards or even a fan-based website where skateboarders who are a, a huge fanatic of skateboarding can visit your website. Now, I understand that most designers cannot code and that is okay. If you want your fan-based website, for example, that skateboarding site to go live, then go to a site like Fiber or freelancer.com and find someone who can code your project, well, actually your design, for a very low cost, just so you can push it live and you can have visitors visiting your website. And after that, just keep making your website better and better. Or option two, do the design, upload it on InVision for a prototype and use that for your portfolio. <sighs> wow, energy's coming back. Okay, now that you have a working project or a working prototype, you can now go ahead with a portfolio, which is step number two. So before when I became a successful UX UI designer, I did have a lot of my work in my portfolio. So it was graphic design, a lot of UX UI design stuff, and some of them were just my fan base projects and client websites that I did a five pager for. And those projects that I did, I know they weren't major, I know they weren't um, the type of projects that I'm taking on right now, which I'm sure you guys want to, but at the time, it was just a five-pager website, a couple of logos, and my fan base website. But the thing is, when I applied for a job, they were more interested to know how I was able to operate my fan base website, which is a Dragon Ball Z site, SaintsWeb.net. How was I was like how I was able to operate it? What languages languages did I use? What UX process did I use? They wanted to know that because it was more of a bigger project, which required a lot of work, a lot of design, a lot of UX steps, and they were interested in that. And it was a responsibility that I took on my own. I didn't have a boss. So they were very interested in, in that because 
now they have a candidate who they're interviewing, interviewing, who they are interviewing that can take on his own responsibility and doesn't need to sit around for bosses approval per project and things like that. So that gave me a big boost when I was competing with uh, graduates. And most importantly, number three is your resume slash portfolio, but we, we already spoke about portfolio. Yes, your resume. And I know this will sound tacky. Like I said before, include your personal projects, your fan base websites, or even the five page website that you did in your resume, right? It doesn't matter. Like the projects that you have done, these companies, they don't need to sound big. You don't have to write Nike or you don't have to write BMW. Like they're not looking for that, especially when you're applying for an entry level role. What they want to know is what did you do in that project? What was the responsibilities? What was your UI steps? What were your UX process and how you came up with the solution? That's pretty much it. So let me show you a great example of my portfolio that I use to get clients or when I am applying for a job. And I think I've updated that about a year ago or two. I think, yeah, I think the portfolio was updated about two years ago. So let's go and check that out. All right. So this is my portfolio website. So pretty much when you enter and my internet has to be slow. Yeah. It kind of does that fade effect. I am not one of those designers where I'm, I'm going to start having a bunch of big fat screenshots of templates or the design that I've done. I don't like them. I personally don't, I'm not a big fan of it. And because I have a lot to showcase, I decided to do it like this. So as you can see, I, and I also created this in one of my YouTube videos, I'll, I'll link it below. So you got my name and clients that I work with and ways to contact me, all that good stuff, social media, blah, blah. blah. Um, let's start from the bottom. So this is a startup company. So when I apply for companies and they want to see my entrepreneur side of things, they can check the website out. They can also check out my YouTube video and then I'm a dribble, which are like uh, recent, sh recent shocks or things like that. And then my portfolio, all of my portfolio pieces are um, lay uploaded in Behance because that way anyone can check it out. I get the views of it, likes, and I think this way is a lot better. And also at the, um, at, the, at the same time, the Behance community, if they are designing a, a travel site or a sign up form, anything, they can end up in my page and find what they're looking for. It's so much better, man. Like for example, when I click here, this is one of the project, I can easily just upload all of my work here and I'm scrolling so fast, but yeah, that's it. People can comment on it, whatever. So having said that, um, let's skip everything here and talk about my portfolio pieces. Obviously I've done a lot of work throughout the years, but I've decided to keep everything now regarding UX UI. So that's the new change I've done about two years ago. And these are the three recent projects that I have done. So one is, uh, let's click here. This is a UI UX free app that I did with Adobe XD, which I'm sure most of you guys have downloaded. It's free for download, by the way, you only need Adobe XD. So that's one. Um, here are the points about the project, the challenge and solution. Um, the challenge was to gain subscriber count for my channel right here. And the solution was, is I got more than that. I got 500 plus subscribers. Even till now I get a couple because they ended up coming to that, uh, that YouTube channel. Oh, no, no, that video to download this. So I do get subs for that. Um, Adobe XD was new. Well, it's. I don't still. I don't think it was. It was. It, well, I don't think if you, if you will still consider Adobe XD new, but yeah, at the time it was brand new and it was trending. So I decided to do this and gain exposure. These are the design right over here. The app design this is a message um, page. This is the main page. Yep. And then you got the stories or I don't know something like that. Uh, social media where I have promoted. I got a badge in Uplabs, Twitter, Dribble. Um, this is how it looks like when you upload a story. Uh, it's kind of like a fusion of Instagram and Twitter, something like that. This is, that's why I designed it. Um, this is the MS. Not this is the message page, and then how it looks when you search. And uh, profile page will look like this. Comments, posts and so on and so forth. There's, there, there are a lot of screens, so you gotta download them. Uh, what else did I do here is I included the color scheme and typography. 
Um, I also made my entire project look fancy. It wasn't a lot of screens. I don't understand why people up upload that because you don't really need to see a lot of screens. Th then again, that's my point of view. The important part is to describe the challenge, solution, and about the project, which is these three things. However, this project is was was just done, you know, from me. I made this up. I launched it, and the reason was to gain exposure for my YouTube channel. So this is wasn't by a client or anything like that. So now let's move on to a project that I did for a company. So let's go right over here. I think I did this in 2018. Yeah. So the year and month is here to 2018. What, I, what did I do? I did a responsive design UX UI and it's in the travel industry called booksies.com. Here's about the project, the, the challenge solution, which you guys know. And my role was a lead UX designer and what UX strategy did I use? Now this is the part. Um, so now throughout my years of working for clients and uh, for companies, UX process does change and it's based on the company that you work for, their UX team might do it um, a bit differently, 30% differently than the company that, that you guys might be, I mean, the company that you are working for or you might be working for. Um, whatever you learn in school, you are not going to have the opportunity to apply everything in terms of the UX process. So in this project, what I did was, I did the discovery stage, user research, sitemap, wireframe, uh, UI, UX, prototype, and design implementation reviews, and the entire project is six months. So that's all I did. I did not do user testings. I didn't do um, uh, AB, AB testing. Well, I couldn't have because it's a brand new site. Um, yeah, so now when you go to the bottom, it's the same style. I got a nice big image here. This is how the site main page looks like. Uh, typography, color scheme, couple of cool, couple of complicated pages, I guess. Uh, this is the search engine of uh, flights. Here's the flight details, and then the calendar. You know, this is a little bit of um, more detail towards the calendar. This is how it looks like uh, when you type in the search. It will appear like this, kind of like Google, I guess. Uh, where else? Uh, the process allowed allowed Books.com to interact and provide feedback on the design throughout the engagement together we created a one-stop shop so it sums up uh, what it is and then you have the hotel search result responsive uh, pages and then the mobile that's it right so keep it short and simple don't have portfolios don't have a portfolio page where the list just goes on and on and on and on and on because when a recruiter is reviewing your portfolio or the art director, whoever may be the person that is going to hire you, they're, they're not going to spend one hour in your portfolio. So take that in, include screens that are complicated, like search results, how the calendar is going to look, the search engine. Those are very complicated um, uh, UX. So include that here. Um, explain your process. Be honest, don't fake your UX steps because they will ask you in the interview and um, you don't want to be that, I hate saying this, but you don't want to be that idiot who lied. And uh, yes, so this is a client project, September 2018, responsive UX UI, it's a job recruiter company like LinkedIn about the project, you know, and what did I do as my role? I was a creative, creative director, this is through my agency. My UX process was discovery, um, research, sitemap, UX, UI, and prototype. And it's currently an ongoing process. They have someone that uh, does the uh, QA. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, so they do the QA, they, they do the um, uh, user testings, and it's, a, it's from a third party. So they take care of that, and we initially take care of the UX, UI. And this is, once again, same concept typography color screen right again a uh, small blurb about the entire process notification is how it looks like and then you can all you guys can all check this out in my uh, portfolio website work of i'll link it below and then yeah that's pretty much it yeah so that is my portfolio if you guys like the way i have designed my portfolio and all the information feel free to copy it and use it because at the end of the day if you get hired then that's going to make me happy so no problems there 
Um, if you have your own portfolio, please share it with me. I'll give you my two cents. I reply to all you guys. Uh, sometimes I could be three days late, five days late, but I, you will get an answer from me and I'll give you my best two cents. I'm also going to ask you some couple of technical UX questions to see if you have faked your portfolio or not. Yes. All right, now the only thing that I would recommend is do not fake your interview answers because the recruiters will, they will be able to tell they're highly professional, skilled. They're not gonna hire someone with 10 months of experience to recruit you. So uh, don't fake it. As you've seen in my, in my portfolio, a lot of my UX processes were, uh, I wasn't involved in, but I still mentioned the ones that I was involved in because nowadays they understand that not every company have the same UX process. Um, number two is practice your interview skills with your friends, family, anyone that um, you are comfortable talking to. And uh, number three would be um, accept your failures. You know, whichever interview you go for the first time, you are going to get nervous. Happens to all of us, even me. So you might get the interview or you might get a job after the third round or fifth round or tenth round. It's hard. It's very competitive right now. UX UI design industry is very, very competitive. Apparently everybody wants to be a, uh, a designer now because well, companies are shifting towards the World Wide Web, right? Um, I was lucky that I started when I was 10 years old or I found interest when I was uh, 10 years old. And uh, if you liked this video, please give it a big, big, big thumbs up. Once again, if you got any questions you wanna or you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one private, or if you have any questions, privately then just dm me on instagram linkedin twitter links of my social media channels are in the description below thank you so much for watching i hope everything made sense and i'll see you guys in my next video why did i do this peace out i think it was last week that it was spidey's birthday i should have made a video about it i love spider-man spider-man has the best merch yeah i like spider-man i'm a big iron man fan I also like Hulk, not the muscle, but his brain is very smart. But Spidey has the best merch and also Deadpool. Deadpool is awesome too. That's a new record, 22 minutes I finished this video.